Welcome to another video. This is a short one, just covering how to cut the front guards and how to do the front wheel clearance when you're putting flares on a LH LX type Tirana. So there's often, you know, questions on the internet about the best methods, how much room you need, etc. Um, I'm going to do a quick video here where I just talk about what I did to my car, showing where you need to add the space, um, what kind of you know, reference points you might want to use for all of that kind of thing. And uh, I think a video is much more demonstrative than just a few photos or whatever. So let's see if this can help you guys out. Cheers. I've got the wheel off the car. The suspension is just hanging at full droop. This is the front left corner. And we're going to talk a little bit about the modifications to the guard of the car, the bodywork around the footwell of the car, and also the flare itself. So the flare is an aftermarket fiberglass one. The main thing that I've done to modify the flare is I've cut out, you know, a bit of the thickness at that front section. It was a little bit, th it was a little, little bit fat. I've kind of distorted it a little bit in a way to keep that out, just the way that I've bolted it on. I've tried to keep it um, you know, further from the car. Another thing that you could do is you could actually make like a turnbuckle, turnbuckle bracket off the bumper bar iron to there to push that out further if that is what you need. In my case, I didn't need that, but really badly like, you know, reshaped flares that aren't in very good I guess mold condition or whatever, like they came off shitty molds, they might have more problems like that. I was reasonably lucky maybe with my ones. Um, the biggest change I probably did is this shape here. It was far more like directly across the car. When I put the when I put the car, um, when I put the flares on the car, it's really difficult to see in photos and stuff, but basically that edge was very much across the car. I took a wedge, like a triangle shape out of the bottom, and um, I just bent it in and re-fiberglassed it. So it tucks in a lot harder, and that allows the wheel to really swing through there as it steers. Now, the same problem exists even more severely with the bodywork of the car. It's got a, um, it's got a pinch weld kind of seam originally that's very vertical there. So it goes up and down there, that is totally in the way of decent, wide, aggressive offset wheels with tyres on them. So there are photos of, you know, people with the Group C uh, race cars back in the day, like Bathurst cars, when the cars were brand new, belting the shit out of that area with, um, with sledgehammers. You will need to do more than that, in my opinion, if you want to have decent fitment on a flared Tirana. So I just cut that whole area out. That seam kind of thing there, that lip, I just basically cut all of it off. There's like a tiny bit left of it at the top. Um, this kind of diamond shape I just made myself. I'll put some photos in that demonstrate, I guess, how far I cut it back and things like that. But that's basically in line with that funny box section thing. So it's got like that box section bit of the chassis there. I just went straight from there vertically up and um, you know the profile looks a little bit funny on the angle but basically that's just a straight line in both of those axes if you can or both of those planes if you can see it that way. I just welded it on, put another weld where the, the floor on the inside of the car where that floor meets the new piece. I just put a MIG weld there and um, that there works really well. Originally they do have a recess here for the wiring to pass through so that allows the wiring from the dash to go down to the sill area that's only used on the driver's side of the car so i got rid of it on the left that's just flat i'll once again add a photo in there that shows me removing that and on the driver's side I couldn't remove it because you still have wiring on the driver's side i just moved it back a little bit so that i could get more real estate there Now I did all of my measuring and everything with a big 17 inch wheel at, like with a decent uh, offset at full bump, sitting on the bump stop with no spring in it and it works sweet for that. And in practice, it works really well driving the car. So in addition to that, yeah, I've done the angle there. I've of course molested the hell out of that area to give it way more space, that works well. This here, you can ignore, that's just for like, a, that's a shield, like a stone shield for some 
um, fuel plumbing and stuff. I've got inner guards on this car that I made. They're ABS plastic at the back going to a um, sheet metal aluminium along the top. Of course, that's just my own thing. You don't need to have that on yours. And the guard cut, it's pretty intuitive. Basically, you just look anywhere where the wheel might get close and you cut the guard up right near where the flare bolts are. There is absolutely no need. There's no reason when you're doing this stuff to like leave the guard on so it's hanging down to there or anything like that. There's just no sense in it. Cut it the whole way up. It doesn't do anything advantageous leaving it there. So cut it off, just get as much real estate as you can so you can have the car low with shitloads of tire and shitloads of negative offset. Enjoy, good luck with it.